Good evening, everybody. This is Frankie Day for Frankie Day's Models. All right, gentlemen, for this uh, pleasant evening, I got for you video four for the update build on the Dumas George W. Washburn tow tug of the late 19th century. And uh, I've been putting a lot of work on this thing, guys. And now, right now, I'm at the stage to have the hull painted. The hull's really primed. I primed it about three times after I finished up the work on it thus far. So far taken from the last uh, video, I went ahead and sanded down the hull, primed same, filled in any perfections, any high-low spots, using a squeegee. You don't want to use your fingers, use a squeegee. And uh, when that's done, I gave it a prime job. I couldn't find any, so I'm satisfied. Okay, I put the cap rails on. I stained the deck. I took the deck off. Before I got all this stuff on, I had to make sure that the inside of the hull is, is equally uh, watertight as much as the exterior part of the hull is. Uh, I put about a big thick coat of uh, resin in there. Well, let that resin dry. Went back and used that machinery deck gray paint that I had. Using a brush, generously paint inside the hull. You'll see it on the stills behind me. And uh, so it's a neat, clean, watertight hull. I've got the um, motor, I've got the motor mounts installed. I've got the servo block installed. Now I've got the rudder all hooked up. I got the actuator rod, the, the pull rod that goes from the servo to the rudder horn on the, on the rudder post. Got the Fandel deck uh, all planked and uh, got it installed. The whole hull is completely finished. All it needs now is to be painted. Then fun time has just begun. It's going to be relaxing. All the fittings, like making bits and all these little fiddly bits and bobs and stuff you got to make for it, works out pretty good. And uh, so what's really wonderful about these new Dumas kits, it's a state of, of laser cutting. We laser cut parts, it makes the pill more sweeter. And I like these new Dumas kits now. Let's talk about Dumas kits. I've got two of them coming right now. I want to get my retirement check and my social security. I'm on vacation right now, I'm just having a blast. I'm out there sailing my ships out there and my boats, tugboats and such at, at the Metro Pond I go to along with, with my fellows I had the club with. And uh, I just have just a, I'm just having a blast out there. I'm really enjoying myself very much. It's, it means a lot to me, you know, and and uh, that's what life's all about. And uh, so I was kind of pounding her for a while. I said, you know, I, I'm going to start shut down, quit buying all these models I got. I got way too many. And uh, so I kind of broke the, uh, I broke that by uh, getting two more. I ordered the Dumas. Uh, Carol, Carol Moran tug. Uh, I was watching a YouTube uh, community, and there and it has one gentleman. That, I think I think it's gentleman from Oklahoma. Uh, it's called My RC Center. He did a complete build log on the on the uh, on the Carol Moran that 172nd scale tug. He did an excellent job on it, and it runs very well. And uh, so I got that kit coming in. So be sure to check check this gentleman's channel out, my, uh, my RC Center, and uh, he has all kinds of uh, RC projects that he's done, and so he finished them. They're out there in the air or on the water. He did a beautiful job on the Andrew Gale, that Gloucester fishing boat, that swordfish boat, that got sunk off of uh, like off one of those islands out there, Sable Island somewhere, during the perfect storm. Okay, so be sure to check this gentleman's uh, uh, video out. You'll be uh, really pleased with it. Because you know? he inspired me to buy this tug. It's, it's only 17 and a half inches long, so it's, it's, it's big. It's small, but it's big. And uh, so we'll go through it when the kit gets in here. Also, <laughs> I shot my wad again. I went on and got me a Jersey City tug. It's about 132nd scale. It's probably about almost 40 inches long and it's probably about so wide. 
So it's uh, it's gonna be another project I'll be working on. So I'm gonna shut down after that. I got too much stuff, guys. I gotta start finishing up my plate. Okay, we're gonna take the camera. We're gonna zoom in behind me and check out the stills and discuss each still as it goes along, what I was doing there and everything else. So uh, we're finally right here. We're gonna go right to the video here, right to the stills. Okay, guys, that deck wasn't glued on in the first place. It was just placed on there. I don't glue nothing down until this thing is finished. As you can see, the bare bones of the kit itself has all been planked over these frames. I think this is about the only kit that Dumas produces, I know of right now, that's in production that's planking frame. A lot of them out there got that ABS or PVC hull, plastic hulls are using, which makes life a lot quicker, a lot more simpler, and a lot more sweeter, and you have to worry about going to the steps of fiberglassing your hull. Now talking about fiberglass, fellas, I forgot to mention on the past three videos, those of you who worked in fiberglass before understand what old Frankie Day is talking about. Well, fiberglass, you got to be very, very careful working with fiberglass, especially in the process of sanding. Make sure you use a respirator and you wear some eyewear and a long sleeve shirt. Because when you start sanding down fiberglass with different grips of sandpaper, it leaves a heavy residue like sawdust, which is the same, but the principle is the same. And uh, you don't want to get none of that stuff in your lungs or get it in your eyeballs and make sure you don't get none of your skin because you get that stuff in your skin, you'd be scratching like a dog with a fist full of fleas. And uh, your day would be ruined scratching and digging all day long. So the, the, uh, the word of thought, rule of thumb is uh, always wear a long sleeve shirt when you're sanding these things down and wear, wear respirators and wear eye, eye gear because you don't want to breathe none of this stuff. Fiberglass did very well in this model. I dropped this hull three times intentionally, see what happens. It never broke. So I got a strong hull. Okay guys, I applied resin inside the hull itself. Then when that resin cured and dried, I took that machinery deck paint that I bought down there at the Home Depot. I took my disposable paintbrush, which you buy there, which I still use it. And I generously painted the gray, about two or three coats in here. This thing is, is smooth inside, guys. This thing is watertight. There ain't no way this water is going to enter this hull. There's only two ways water is going to enter this hull if you intentionally try to sink it, or you got water comes in through the stuffing box where your propeller protrudes through the back of the stern. So this hull has been completely sanded down quite well now. It's all been perfections out, smooth. Next deal, Frankie. Okay, another view right you're looking at. There's the motor mounts I put in there. You got a six volt motor, Dumas motor fits back here. Remember that motor I showed you on video three? Fits very well right here. I'm gonna drill a hole here and a hole here, hole here, hole here. Lay the engine right there, make sure it fits to the universal all the way up to the stuffing box to your propeller shaft. And uh, these holes here you're going to pre previously drill, there's going to be a strap. When that motor fits here in this direction towards this way, you get to have something to keep that motor mechanically sealed to the mounts by drilling holes and taking sheet aluminum and bending 90s at one end. Drill holes there and drill a hole right there through your aluminum correspond with the holes on your uh, motor mounts then generally you just kind of come over with your aluminum and hold out cut the same and make sure that's the cap is still using the screw your motor ain't going nowhere and uh, speed control fits over here your battery can fit here I got a six fold gel cell it's square shaped like this and it comes out like that like this and back this way and uh, I don't use lipo batteries, guys. Lipo batteries to me are a jip. They're too expensive. They don't last very long. When I want to take a boat out to a, to a pond, I don't want to have to go out there for 5, 10, 15 minutes and have the battery go dead on me. I have to charge it for an hour. And here I'm sitting in a chair doing nothing for an hour with the battery charges. 
So I always get a gel cell. You can buy these at battery surplus stores or battery plus. Any store that sells batteries, they're gel cells. You get yourself a charger. You charge this battery up, guys, I kid you not. You can run this boat right here all day long and all night. You'll tire out before that battery goes down. And that's how Frankie Day rolls from Grady Patrol using a, a gel cell battery. They got 6 volts, 12 volts. So since this is 6 volt propulsion, this is going to be a 6 volt battery on here. Okay, next deal. There it is now guys. I'm just now planking the deck. I got the deck in there. I'm planking the deck. On the side of the bulwarks right here, there's going to be a veneer. Strip of PVC veneer fits inside here. When that, when that PVC fits inside there, no painting. You have to worry about filling and painting the bulwarks and everything else. This little hole here, this is where your your stern post bearing goes on here. So when you're drilling your hole through back to your stern, where your rudder posts will go through here, you got to be quite sure that it's straight and particular with the keel. You don't want to come out this way or come out the hole this way. And you got your rudder it comes up like this and down like this and such. Make sure your rudder is positioned correctly. So at this stage right here, using tight bond cement, I think I just finished planking this deck already. It's better, guys. Next deal. As you can see, see how I plank those decks? I didn't put no nibbles across there like that. I put waterways across here. You'll see them in the next video. They gave you Dumas. One thing about Dumas, they are very, very, very generous when it comes to giving you wood, extra wood, and extra plastic and such, and doweling and wire. They give you more than uh, the, the, what you can bargain for. But, you know, the way I look at it, I'm very, very pleased with these Dumas kits because they give you more than what you uh, what the, comes in the kit. And they understand that sometimes you make boo-boos, you need extra wood. And uh, so they're actually 10 jumps ahead of you on that prospect. So, so I'm very happy. We're very happy with Dumas kits. They are. They, they're, 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 they're pretty good now. Years ago, they were very difficult because they were plank and frame like this one. And you had to put fiberglass and all that work. But all that work is worth it, guys. You have a sound, watertight hull. Okay. We'll go to the next deal. All righty. Looking at loose crude here, guys. Don't worry about that. I took a file and sanded all that down real smooth before I add the veneer. You can see how all that paint right there, that resin sealed all those caulkings in it around the decks inside, inside the hull. Ain't gonna go nowhere. Thumbs up. Happy. Next step. Veneer time. No, I think it's stain time. Okay. It's called glue the decks time. I get the decks glued down. I got them all clamped down real well. Let it dry for about four or five hours. This type bond really does the job, guys. I highly recommend using type bond. This type bond is good cement, and it's made for this kind of stuff. You can't rely on on crazy glues and stuff, and. Um, and like ACC glues, fast glues, tri-light glues. I try to stay away from that as much as I can. I like to use type mon cement. That's my glue of choice. Alrighty then. The big AOK -okay sign. And over here. Clamps are off. Decks in place. Holds looking nice. Rub rails in place. Deck's nice and neat. Right now I'm sanding down the deck using the fouling sticks. Got the plan of the model in the background. I don't know why I didn't have a skeg go across here hooked up to your rudder, but I did a mine. All boats have skegs. A skeg is the most very important thing on any screw driven vessel. It protects that screw like a screw guard. Another picture of it. Look at that. Okay, guys, here's an disposal brush. Here's that stain I'm using. I use an amber lacquer. This is all water based. 
I think I put in about five coats on this. If you tell me to put it on there, I let it dry. Don't have to worry about putting stain on the side here, guys. You know why? Because you got veneer across, you got PVC veneer, plastic inside there. So all of this is done before that's out in place. Alrighty. There you go, guys. See what I'm saying? There you go. Looking like a boat now. There she is. The cap rails are all in place. Once I get this hole done and painted, which is the next step, I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the bits, start fitting out this whole thing, work on the stacks, hook up the, bring up the guy wires. A lot of work though, but it'll go fast because everything's pre done for you. Looking at, I got that fan deal tech plank back here this way using one eight by zero, eight by eight thousandths planking right there. You see how nice that stain comes across there. Looking forward again, see I got the waterways across there. Another view. <laughs> got that C-47 in the background. I think it still shines. I think that was a D-Day group build I built that one. Okay. I went back, did some more sanding on the hull. Took it off again, gave that a coat. A varnish on there. I got clamped down. I had to put a little filler right there because I cut it out there with a saw. The other piece went right across this way, hooked up right there. So it sanded now. It disappeared. Don't even see that joint anymore. There she is in the view right there. You can see how nice that deck came out. This thing's got to be really waterproof, guys, all around. Got the rudder in place. I got the combing around here. The cabin fits right over here. Tight. Nice snug fit. It already dry fit a while ago. And it fits very, very, very well. And I'm very well pleased with, with the installation. How it goes. And, uh, so uh, right now I just need to do some more sanding on a little bit here. Then I'm going to take some masking tape. I'm going to mask inside the bulwarks, all the way around the side. Mask all the combing, mask the inside of this, mask all the deck. And all this is going to be painted like a dark walnut color. Almost like a black with a tinge of brown in it. Because these turn of the century, late 19th century tugs, even early 1903-1904 tugs, the, the, the wood that they use on there, the paint that they use, they, they seem how they, they, it, it gives you the, the, uh, the illusion of, of dark walnut color. So that's what I'm going to do on this. Now for the water line, it's going to be painted colonel red which is pretty close to uh, copper red, what they used. Because they had red, red oxide back in those days. There's a combing right there. Man, tell that got sanded around there more. That's more sanding. I'm always sanding, guys. I look around all the time, put the model to the side, I stare at it, and glower at it, do all I can. I see something I don't like, I want to immediately get it all cleaned up. This deck is dry. I got little specks of dust on here, guys, when I was using sanding a while ago. I'm happy. 